There's about a 90% chance that Genesis of the Daleks was your first classic Doctor Who serial. As for many years it was the most often repeated story, and you can see why, because whichever way you look at it, it does just make sense as an introduction to classic Doctor Who. It features the most popular classic Doctor, shows the origin of the most popular enemy, and aside from some incredibly minor contextual season arc related stuff, it can be enjoyed in its own right. Genesis is the perfect representative classic Doctor Who story that gets newcomers into it, although that is strange to say because it's certainly an unconventional one. The TARDIS isn't actually in it for one thing, and for another, there isn't really a whole lot of Daleks rolling around and killing people and blowing shit up. The Daleks themselves are barely even in it, as there's only a small handful of them at this stage in their development. In Planet of the Daleks there were hundreds, so maybe this was a case of Nation realising that less is more. Genesis is almost entirely human drama, although it doesn't feel that way. It works so well because you can almost feel the sinister oppressive shadow of the Daleks hanging over the compound. You can feel the presence of the Daleks as just an idea in pretty much every scene. One thing I noticed immediately on my recent rewatch of Genesis was just how brash it is. It's very fast paced and it just sort of chucks the viewer into every situation presented and it doesn't really give that much of a shit if they're lost. But even if the viewer does get lost at any point it never allows that feeling to fester and it immediately then shoves the viewer into another intimidating situation. Case in point, the story starts with the Doctor suddenly being confronted by an unnamed Time Lord who gives a foreboding prophecy of a time when the Daleks have conquered the universe and says that the Time Lords want the Doctor to go back to the Daleks' birth and interfere with their origins. This scene has been taken and recontextualized in the years since to be the supposed smoking gun for the Time War, but that is just hindsight that's done that really. This scene's primary purpose is an excuse to have the Doctor, Sarah Jane and Harry show up on Scaro at the time of the Daleks' birth, and to trigger the moral conundrum found later in the story. Although it is quite interesting that the Time War was seemingly triggered by the Time Lords breaking their cardinal rule of interference by forcing the Doctor to do the one thing that they're always getting on his case about. Anyway, if the lore stuff evoked by the appearance of this mysterious Time Lord does alienate any newcomers, it doesn't really matter, because it's a short and succinct setup and it's gone immediately and the viewers then chucked into the Doctor, Sarah Jane and Harry stumbling through the wasteland and getting captured by the Carleds. The establishment of our setting is really tight and goes at a nice and controlled pace. We have the Doctor, Sarah Jane and Harry finding bodies of soldiers who've been fighting with anachronistic weaponry. A nice little inexplicable image for episode 1 to explore. The Doctor and the Companions investigate, and the image begins to make sense as we find out just how long this war's been going on for, and how desperate the soldiers are for supplies. Even to the point where dead bodies are being used to make it appear as if the trenches are manned. You're presented with some desperate, gnarly and extreme imagery. It's incredibly brutal for what often gets called a kids show. Genesis doesn't sugarcoat itself at all. You got General Raven just shouting over this scale model of a battlefield about how the Carleds are going to crush the Thals. Genesis being so harsh and abrasive is an effective way of hiding the fact that it's got a lot of exposition to do, and if it wasn't so brazen then you might notice that the way that it gets most of its exposition out is quite simplistic. The Doctor basically spends the opening episodes essentially prodding Nydra and Ronson into filling in bits and pieces of the bigger picture. But it gets away with this because one, Tom is just ridiculously charming and funny in these scenes, and two, Genesis of the Daleks does not give a fuck. It just screams every point in your face about just how desperate this situation is, and it's incredibly arresting. And the reason for this is an interesting point that I find is rarely brought up in discussions of it. The Carleds, while superficially human and retaining distinct personalities and speaking styles, you know, Nida has this understated creepy drawl, Ronson has twinges of conscientious objection, but it's the way the characters speak which is really striking to me. All of them have clearly grown up with and are accustomed to single-minded, utterly focused, militaristic brutality. I didn't really notice this when I first watched it as a kid, but it's all in the way the dialogue's delivered. While the characters do have their own unique qualities, even at this stage, the Khaled speak and act like Daleks. Particularly General Raven. People always think of Nida when they think of Genesis, but Raven doesn't get nearly enough love. He's so proud and he gets away with barking exposition in your face. No matter how powerful their rocket, it cannot penetrate our protective dome. Only a matter of months ago, Davros perfected a new substance, which has the strength of 30-foot-thick, yes, reinforced yes, well, concrete. Never, never mind. 
If you put a voice filter over that, he might as well already be a Dalek. The performances in Genesis show a race of people at a transitional state between Khalid and Dalek. They're just incredible. The most Dalek-like Khalid of all, of course, is Davros, the scheming creator of the Daleks, who spends the story playing people against each other. I love that his chair is a Dalek base. He almost looks like a chess piece rolling around the compound, and that reflects his role in the story as he calculates his brutal moves. And when I say brutal, I mean fucking brutal. I mean he gives the Thals the means to destroy the Khalid Dome and annihilate his own people, because that's the only way to stop people getting in his way of creating the Daleks. Which is probably one of the gnarliest things that anyone has ever done in the history of this franchise. I was never quite sure whether Davros was supposed to even be the same species as the other Khaleds when I first saw this when I was very young, but I think it is right that they never address his strange, inhuman appearance and just treat him as, yep, yeah, that's Davros. And thematically, this is very interesting. His chair is half Dalek, he barks his orders in the exact same voice as a Dalek, and he has obvious fascist tendencies. I love that Davros is so blatantly and obviously evil, but it takes quite a lot for anyone to notice this. I mean, just look at him, all trussed up in leather like that. Mmm, yeah, hurt me, Daddy Davros. Because of the context of the story, someone as Dalek-like and obviously evil as Davros can just be rolling around the complex formulating his evil plans, and people don't immediately stop and go, wait, he's obviously evil here. They have their creeping suspicions growing over the course of the story, but this is a guy that they've been working with for years. It takes a lot for them to twig that he's obviously going down an evil path. And what having this obviously evil character rolling around does is signify the sinister innocuousness of fascism. States don't just suddenly become fascist, it's a slippery slope towards it. People often don't realise that they've got a fascist in charge until it's too late. Once upon a time, Hitler was just another politician. He started out as a joke, but he became more popular over time because people became accustomed to him. Similarly, people don't notice that Davros is plainly and obviously the bad guy because they've become accustomed to him over time. My creature showed a natural desire, an instinct to destroy, and you interceded! You will be punished for this! Okay, so comparing Davros with Hitler is a bit of an obvious one, but you kind of have to point that out because Genesis of the Daleks' purpose isn't exactly subtle. Terry Nation grew up during the Second World War, so the cultural influences that led him to create the Daleks would have been pretty much all-consuming for anyone growing up around that period. And obviously Genesis of the Daleks takes its inspiration from tales of Nazi human experimentation, but I do understand why people might feel a bit Nazied out when it comes to the use of space fascists as sci-fi allegory by this point in the genre's lifetime. But for the time, this is Terry Nation taking his simple basis of space Nazis and expanding their background with inspiration from in human things that the Nazis actually did. The Nazi angle could never be subtle, of course, because the Daleks themselves were never actually that subtle to begin with. They're robot-like drone creatures single-mindedly focused on destroying all other life because all other life is considered inferior. But the context of this war, the development of the Daleks, and showing the moral conundrums and objections happening around the eradication of all doubt from the Khalid race that this is definitely the path that we're going down, adds a lot more depth to the Daleks than we'd seen up until this point. Genesis builds the Dalek backstory and offers nuance to them. There are good Khalids like Ronson and members of the elite who have their doubts. And Nation has also done another important thing with the Thals in what is tragically their final TV appearance. The Thals are just as fucking ruthless as the Khalids in this story, and you do understand why. They're desperate to end this war, just like the Khalids are, but to that end, they shoot innocent mutos in their way, and they force captives to work on their rocket in toxic conditions and almost get Sarah Jane killed. I should just slacken my grip. I say people who fall from great heights are dead before they hit the ground. The original Thals in the first Dalek serial were peaceful farming folk, but this depiction of the Thals as desperate in Genesis adds depth to their backstory. While the Daleks are very much the bad guys, the tale of the Khaleds versus the Thals is not as simple as a good and evil paradigm. The Thals do bad shit, the Khaleds do bad shit. 
Genesis of the Daleks is a story about how whatever side you're on, war brings out the worst in people. It makes them desperate and frantic when placed in situations where they feel like they've got no choice but to resort to violence. Now remember, we resort to violence only if there is no other way. Genesis of the Daleks is a story of people in a desperate situation unfortunately doing what they have to do. This all comes right down to the famous do I have the right scene, where the Doctor contemplates whether or not he touches these wires together and blows up the Dalek incubation chamber. It contains some brilliant conjecture about how the absence of Daleks causes the absence of alliances formed by future races in their opposition to the threat of the Daleks. Do I destroy the Daleks at their birth is not an easy question to answer, but it's a desperate situation and what else can he do? He gathered the Khalid authorities and told them what Davros was doing, he tried to reach a peaceful solution to shut down Davros's research, but that didn't do anything. And he finds himself in a situation where he has to take direct action, he has to make an incredible Incredibly hard decision. The moral questions and human drama in Genesis are so good, and being very light on the Daleks themselves makes it so when they do feature more prominently in Episode 6, the little Dalek action you get makes way more of an impact. One of the most chilling moments of all is this really eerie silence when Davros loses control of the Daleks right at the end. The Dalek doesn't even say anything before it kills Nida. By having them as these silent, obedient servants throughout the story right up until this point means that that moment when they show their true colours is just this breathtaking moment of pure, unadulterated horror. You will obey me! We obey no one! We are the superior beings! So, yeah, that's Genesis of the Daleks. Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, I know, spicy hot take or what? A video praising one of the most enduring stories from classic Doctor Who? Next up on He Who Moans, water is wet, grass is green, the timeless children was rubbish, and person, woman, man, camera, TV. Anyway, so obviously this video is going to end with a Dalek trundling along and killing my stick for Garavatar. So let's get that out of the way with, yeah? Okay, Dalek going to come along and kill me... now. Any minute now. <sighs> Fuck's sake. Okay, hang on a minute. Hey, you missed your cue. You were supposed to come along and kill me. Well, we are barely in this story, so it makes sense for us to not show up at the end of the review. Yes, but I wrote an ending bit where you come along and kill my avatar and that's the end of the video. I'm in charge of this show. You do as you're told. No, I am a Dalek. I have no master. Oh, oh, I see what you're doing. You're doing the end bit where you kill Davros. Yeah, very clever. Well, guess what? <laughs> You do as you're fucking told in the future, all right? Anyway, I expect the rest of you to go clean that up. Fucking surrounded by morons.